What's up guys, today we're gonna be breaking down Basu's most popular video about how you should text a girl. This video got over 11 million views. We're gonna find out whether this advice is legit or full of shit. All right, so the name of the video is, this is how a girl wants you to text her, how to flirt with a girl over text, and this got over 11 million views in five years. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I have a little bit of a bias because I have had base use on this podcast, but for this video, I'm gonna completely take that aside and try to be as objective as possible in evaluating his advice. So let's get into it. You're texting a girl, she stops replying, and you start thinking, shit, what did I do wrong? Has this ever happened to you? Or maybe you've spent weeks hitting up the same girl, only to be baffled when another guy gets her number and is already hanging out with her within a couple of days. Texting's hard. We so this is good. He's hitting on all of people's pain points. I think this is something that pretty much every guy has experienced multiple per times in his life. All fucked up the texting before. Maybe you said something you shouldn't have and then immediately realized you just fucked up. Maybe you didn't know what to say or how to steer the conversation the way you wanted it to go. So today, I'm here to teach you five do's and five don'ts when texting girls. These are really simple things you can remember or write them down if you need to, but they'll improve your text game significantly. Okay, here we go. Do. Text pretty quickly after getting a girl's number. You never want to wait more than, say, a maximum of like two days between getting a number and texting the girl. I usually... This is correct. I, I agree with that. You don't want to wait too long. I think guys often try to play too cool, right, and the girl forgets about who they are. I typically text the girl the same day, kind of like how he says, usually same day. Yeah, like one day at most, but you think even two days is too long. I would say text her either the same day or the next day. They do it the same day. This lets you keep up the momentum that you've already had and ensures that she doesn't lose interest or forget about you. Don't send cheesy emojis, smileys, LOLs, or anything like that. It'll ruin any good impression she already has of you. That is correct. I don't think it's exactly because it ruins any good impression she has of you. I think it takes more than that to ruin her impression of you. It just comes off feminine, right? And again, sexual polarity is what attractive women like men who are masculine, men like women who are feminine. And so when you're using a lot of LOLs or cheesy emojis and smiles, it makes you look feminine, which lowers your attractiveness again, because it lowers your sexual polarity. As a rule of thumb, if someone else were to read your text and think you were a girl, you're probably using too many fucking emojis, okay? That is true. Yes, that is a good uh, little litmus test. If someone was reading this conversation, without knowing who you were and who the girl was, would they think you were the girl, would they think the girl was the girl, right? That's a really interesting limits test you can use. Do. Use emojis, but sparingly. Now, you don't need to stop using them all together. You just don't want to overdo it. Or send really feminine kissy face ones all the time. Check out my other video on the best emojis to use and when to do it. Don't. Texture. Okay, so uh, I think you don't have to use emojis. I think you can totally have absolute rockstar text game without ever using a single emoji. And in fact, I think for guys who tend to use too many emojis, what you want to do is go to the other extreme and completely stop using emojis. The only time I personally use emojis is to soften certain jokes that would otherwise the girl could think I'm being serious, right? So in real life, when I'm being cheesy and making fun of a girl, right, I'm being like, oh yeah, that's what you're going to wear, right? The girl can read my body language and my sarcasm, right? But I'm saying that over text, right, that facial expression, that tonality gets lost, and that's when you add an emoji to basically show that what you're saying was a joke, so I had a smirking emoji or grin emoji, right? But that is literally the only time I will typically use emojis. For all day, every day. This is even worse than being the guy who sends the kissy emojis all the time. Being the guy who contacts her all day long, every day about every little thing, nobody really gives a shit what you ate for lunch, or what you're doing right now, or that you got a good grade on an English test. Nobody cares. I mean, are you really that boring? Of course. That is true. It shows that you don't have much going on. You have much of a life and you're kind of low value and needy because a high value guy doesn't have time to sit around and text this girl all day because he has 20 other girls that he's texting as well. He's fucking girls, right? He doesn't have enough time to just sit there like, hey, how are you doing? How's your day going? Doesn't mean you can't actually be interacting with a girl throughout the day if something comes up and you're having an interesting conversation. Like I'll text with my girlfriend all the time, right? It doesn't make me gay or it doesn't make me feminine, right? But I'm not going to be like, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Just because we have a lot of interesting things going on, a lot of mutual interests. So it doesn't mean that you can be texting a girl throughout the day if you have interesting conversation thread, but you shouldn't be doing like the constant check-in and being like, hey, how are you? Hey, I did this. Hey, I did that. Any kind of low value needed type of text is a hard no. So you should text things that are cool and worthy of texting. You know, shit that makes her a little bit envious, a little bit curious. All right, do. Text enough to keep her interested. Now, just because you're not sending her a hundred texts a day, it doesn't mean you want to wait three weeks before you text her again. Momentum's a big thing in dating and relationships. If the momentum dies, the relationship or the potential relationship also dies. You need to text enough to keep her interested in you and thinking about you. If you wait too long, she'll stop caring. Don't. 
I think what you're trying to do, I'm gonna rephrase that. I think he's got the right general idea, but I think what you wanna do is get enough investment going from the girl and then you set up the date, right? And if you set up the date like a week ahead of time because she's busy, right, you do wanna take, you do a little texting here and there, right, to keep the interaction warm. So if I set up the date for, I don't know, like let's say a week from now, right, I'm not gonna just completely drop off and text her day off because then she's gonna forget. I am gonna text her throughout the week. So yes, you do wanna do a little bit of pinging and texting here and there, right? So he's got the general idea, but the goal isn't to just like build up momentum over a text over and over, it's to get enough momentum momentum to get a date, right? And then close in real life. Be afraid to tease her. So now that you've nailed down when you should text her, you want to make sure your texts are actually useful. Don't be afraid to tease her or flirt with her. This is one time when emojis work well, so she knows you're just messing around. You should tease her about little things she does or says because it shows you don't put her on a pedestal and are confident enough to tease her when other guys just suck up to her. That is very true. I think teasing is very important. It's a huge part of my game. If you watch my infield and stuff like that, you see I'm constantly, constantly teasing the girl. I'm constantly trolling, fucking around. But at the same time, you also want to be serious from time to time. You don't want to just be trolling and fucking around the whole time. So yes, I think teasing is very good. And that is when emojis come in handy to show that you're not actually, you know, insulting her, right? So he kind of hit on the point that I was trying to make earlier, which is that that is the time you use emojis to basically show that what you're saying isn't actually meant to be an insult. Use texting as a way to set up dates. Don't forget what you're actually trying to do here. You're not looking for another text buddy. You're looking for a chick to go out with. Use texting as a way to set up plans. It's better than calling because it lets her reply when she's free. If you call and she doesn't answer, it already sets up the tone that you're the one who wants to go out with her. When the tone you really want is that you want to both go out with each other don't that is true that is the right frame to have and yes calling girl out of the blue especially nowadays in 2023 can quite often lead to the girl not picking up because she's nervous she's like oh my god uh i'm not wearing the right outfit i can't pick up the phone right she doesn't pick up then you enter negative compliance the girl's like oh shit i wonder if he's mad that i didn't call him back right and there's this whole negative cycle so yes i think it is better if you are gonna call the girl at least tell her over text and be like hey let me call you for a few minutes right get her to say okay sounds good then you call her but typically you don't even need to do that you can set up dates over text without having to call the girl Always text her first. A lot of guys do this. They text the girl, the conversation goes for a while, the girl stops replying. Then later, the guy texts again and repeats the process over and over. Well, all that does is set the tone that you're a lot more into her than she's into you. Don't text her good morning in the mornings. It's unnecessary. It just makes you look clingy. That is true. There's no point in sending these dumbass good morning, good afternoon, good night texts. They're completely pointless, right? Everything you say should have a point. You're not just her text buddy. I think that he makes an interesting point, uh, but basically the point is that you don't want to be chasing, right? Uh, again, it's okay to chase a little bit, right? But you also want to pull back and let the girl chase you as well. So that means like you kind of push, 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 and then sometimes you pull back a little bit. However, if the girl stops responding, it's been two days, don't be afraid to re-engage her, right? So I think it's important to add nuance to this point, right? Because you don't want guys to be like, oh shit, well, she she didn't respond to my last text, so I'm just gonna forget about her, leave, waste a month or something like that, because interactions complete die. You know, you can pull back for two, three days. If you don't hear from her, then you can re-engage again. It's okay. Be casual. You want your text to be casual and light. You don't want to bring up super complicated topics or heavy discussions or anything like that, because if the tone's too heavy, it'll just start pushing her away. 100% true. Again, I always talk about avoid religion, avoid politics, avoid all that heavy shit. I never talk about like, you know, like traumatic events or anything like that, unless the girl insists on bringing it up, in which case I won't like shut her down completely, but I always want to keep the conversation light and fun hearted. Those are the two words I always use. He says cash on light, basically the same thing. Text isn't the best way to do it because it's really easy for someone to ignore a text if they start feeling overwhelmed. Now, if the girl you're talking to is into philosophy or she's majoring in astrophysics and you know she's into deeper topics, then sure, go ahead and bring them up. But if you're texting Bimbo Brittany that you met at a Justin Bieber concert last week, then randomly texting her, Hey, I was just wondering what your opinion is on the philosophical and existential implications of the recent developments in quantum superposition effects being observed at the macroscopic level. Holy fuck! Somebody strangle that son of a bitch! She's not gonna have a goddamned idea what the fuck you're talking about. It's just gonna push her away. See, if you're talking to someone in person and they don't like a topic, it's really easy for you to just change it. But if you're texting and they don't like the topic, it's really easy for them to just ignore the text and make you look stupid. Don't talk too much. If you can't think of anything good to say, don't say anything. If you think it's a good time to end the conversation, end it. Don't be afraid to end a conversation. 
Bonus tip. Set up. I would say, I would kind of rephrase that. I think generally he has the right idea, but I would say, when in doubt, think about your purpose. What is your purpose? And your purpose is typically to get the girl out on a date. So think about like, okay, is this strategy I'm using, is this specific text I'm gonna send, is it getting me closer to my goal? Always take a step back when you don't know what to say and think, is this moving me in the right direction? But overall, I think this is really solid. Again, I don't think he's wrong about anything. Some of these points require a little bit of further clarification, so I go into more nuance. But again, this is a five minute video, so you can't expect to be anything more than general text advice. But I would say this is still better than 99.9% of the text advice you see on the internet. All right, hope you guys found this video valuable. Show some love, like I always say, by smashing the like button, hit subscribe, click the bell for notification, and share this video with a friend or two. If you guys wanna see my whole text game structure, everything from start to finish, then check out my text game fundamentals video, or you can check out my podcast with Base Zeus, and make sure you guys check out our brand new PWF Clips channel. We take all the best highlights from podcasts, debates, arguments, et cetera, and put them on there. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time.